What's up guys, Jay here and welcome back to another Deep Rock Galactic video. Today we got the last video regarding tips on playing each class with better efficiency. So far we've covered the Engineer, Driller, and Scout, but now it's time to go over some tips for the most heavily armed dwarf with the itchiest trigger finger, the Gunner. Today I'm going to help you become a master of the Gunner and his bullet spewing powers. So if you guys are ready, today I'll be sharing 6 useful tips on how to play the Gunner class better than ever before in Deep Rock Galactic. By the way, if you like this video and want to see more, subscribe to the channel, it doesn't cost any Anything and it really helps me out. I'll kill anything with more legs than two! As the gunner, your role is that of protection and elimination of difficult threats. Think of yourself as the team's bodyguard, as your job is to use those heavy weapons of yours to protect your allies at all cost. Everyone on the team has a job to do, whether that's the driller clearing terrain, the scout collecting minerals and intel, or the engineer assisting both of them in their efforts as well as his own. One thing that is shared between all of them, however, is the fact that they can do all of their jobs much better if they don't have enemies breathing down their neck. This is where the gunner comes into play, being the frontline support and bastion for the team to rely on. When a swarm inevitably does come after the team, you should already have a plan in motion and a defense strategy ready for your team to feel safe around you. Number 1. Know Your Loadout the Gunner class offers a range of interesting weapons that he can use for his bullet spewing purposes, each with unique strengths and weaknesses. The Gunner uses heavy weapons and explosive ordnance to support the team, and knowing the specialties of each weapon can make missions much easier. The Leadstorm minigun is perfect for dealing sustained damage to swarms of enemies, making it an excellent choice for taking down hordes of bugs. However, it does take some time to spin up, so be sure to start firing before you engage the enemy. On the other hand, the Thunderhead Autocannon excels at dealing massive area damage with explosive rounds. It's ideal for taking out high priority targets like Praetorians or Menaces. Remember that the Autocannon has a limited magazine and decently long reload, so make sure each shot counts and reload at opportune moments. For secondary weapons, the Bulldog Revolver is a reliable choice for finishing off enemies at range, while the Burst Gun, with its precise shots, can be a valuable tool for taking down distant targets. Experiment with different combinations of primary and secondary weapons, as well as explosive ordnance to find the loadout that suits your playstyle best and whatever mission you are currently on. Number 2. Your zipline is like a third weapon. As a gunner, your ziplines are an invaluable tool for both mobility and defense. When navigating the caves, always look for opportunities to create ziplines that will help your team reach difficult areas or quickly escape dangerous situations. Keep an eye out for choke points or narrow tunnels where swarms of enemies might converge. Placing a zipline in such areas can help your team gain an advantageous position to deal with threats efficiently. Now, I'm sure that this use of ziplines is obvious, but you can also use them during a swarm or intense combat situation to quickly move around the battlefield and provide supporting fire from different angles. You can essentially turn yourself into a floating turret, going back and forth supporting your teammates from the air. One practice that can be good to get into the habit of doing is whenever you hear mission control announce an incoming swarm, you set up a zipline, it doesn't really matter where it goes, but you set it up to give yourself the elevation and a mobility that will put you ahead of the swarms. This method is highly effective for two reasons. One, it significantly lowers the amount of accidental friendly fire damage that you will do to the team since it is very unlikely that they will be directly in your line of fire. Second, it means that the only bugs that can even hit you are the ones that have ranged attack to them, so you can avoid much of the cave's hazards. With that in mind, however, do be careful not to go too high into the air because if you do get hit by too many ranged enemies, you'll fall off the zipline and to your untimely demise. Maybe have your engineer friend put some platforms under your zipline to help break the fall. Simply put, the mobility provided by the zipline can help you stay one step ahead of the enemies and assist your teammates effectively. Number 3. Use your shield generator properly. The Gunner Shield Generator is a powerful asset that can protect your team from harm as well as assist in many other situations. In my opinion, the shield is arguably the most useful utility tool out of all the classes in terms of team play at least. It has a wide range of applications and uses that can be of great help. One thing that is very common, especially for new players to fall into the habit of, is holding onto their shield generator so much because they are not sure if a worse situation is going to come later. Or worse, they throw it down after the team has already been attacked and everyone is badly hurt. The best mindset to have with the shield is to be proactive and not reactive with your shield placement. Remember that you want to use it to stop damage in the first place. If you let the bugs get to your team before placing the shield down in the first place, then you're just putting your team on the back foot of a fight. Be mindful of your team's position and activate the shield generator when needed. Remember too that it can be used to help cover teammates for a revive, for example, as it takes all of the pressure off of you. And as well, throwing your shield down on a hacking pod or a rock cracker pod or an uplink terminal can give your team a much better time 
defending those locations. Simply put, the shield generator is an invaluable source of safety for yourself and the team, so make sure to take advantage of it fully and don't save it for a rainy day like I see some people do. Number 4. Master Sustained DPS Remember that you are the team's bodyguard, and that role is not given to just any class lightly. The gunner is called the gunner for a reason, and that's because there is no one in the game that can dish out damage like him. Now sure, other classes might be able to beat you in terms of burst damage, but no class has the ability to keep sustained damage up like the gunner. As such, you should use that damage as liberally as possible. Don't be afraid to tape your finger to the trigger for a minute straight if it means that the team will be left unscathed. Your weapons, grenades, and equipment are all designed to dish out damage to the bugs efficiently, so don't deny them the task they were meant to have. By the time the engineer and scout finish their burst DPS combos, they most likely have burnt through a lot of their ammo and resources to do so, while you haven't even gone through one reload yet. The gunner is not meant to delete bugs as much as he is meant to grind them into dust with a seemingly endless onslaught of damage and destruction. That's the reason he has things like a minigun and not a sniper rifle. If you're doing your job right, the swarms of bugs won't even be able to reach your team, and even if they do, they'll be so close to death that even a single pickaxe swing could finish the job. Number 5 carry your weight out of combat. With all of his immense combat prowess, the question then becomes what does the gunner do in those moments of downtime between enemy engagements? Well, the simplest and most useful thing to do is simply aid the team in the basic ways that you can assist in any mission. Collecting ground-based resources is going to be your priority since the scout and engineer are most likely working together to get those high up resources in the walls, and the driller is most likely creating sight lines and travel tunnels throughout the caves. If you have extra zip lines, look for places that your team can use them to cross huge chasms or gorges. With no combat, your role becomes more flexible and less defined, and also depends on the mission type as well. On stationary missions like on-site or point extraction missions, you can set up your zip lines like a spider web to give your team a travel network to get around the location quickly. This is especially useful on maps where the terrain generation is very vertical and other classes' traversal tools are not nearly as effective. Except for the scout, but he's selfish so he doesn't count. On mobile missions like mining expeditions, make extra care to collect ground nitra above all else since you will most likely need it more than the other classes to aid in protection and combat. Number 6. Communicate to Eliminate in a cooperative game like Deep Rock Galactic, communication is vital. As a gunner, share information with your team about the location of your zip lines, shields, and most importantly, the enemy threats. Let them know when you deploy your shield generator, especially during tricky situations where everyone needs to hunker down. Remember, you are the team's bastion of safety, and they will turn to you to feel safe if the situation gets ugly. As such, you should always stay vigilant for any calls for help from your teammates. The gunner's firepower and crowd control capabilities can be a lifesaver when your comrades need you in a tight spot. Remember, as well to focus on any high value or difficult targets to eliminate them easily. This task will most likely be completed by the scout, but he may require your assistance in certain situations. Similarly, while the engineer excels at wide angle crowd control, he may require your assistance if the horde is just a little too thick for him to handle. And of course, the driller can always use more help at causing immense wanton destruction to both the enemies and the environment. Whatever your team needs of you, be alert for the assistance you can provide as the gunner. And there you have six loaded tips to improve your gunner play in Deep Rock Galactic. Now hopefully you have a better idea of how to be the bastion of defense that your team needs you to be. The gunner may not be overly flashy or have too many insanely complex strategies around him, but sometimes just pointing your gun and holding down the trigger is the best strategy you need. By embracing your role, using your zip lines effectively, making sure to utilize your equipment and weapons effectively, and supporting your teammates whenever needed, you'll become an invaluable asset to your team. The gunner has a very important place in the DRG roster and is also insanely fun to play. The gunner can always fall back onto his natural talent if all else fails. Just mow down everything on screen. But what do you guys think? Did you learn anything new that you didn't before? If you don't play the gunner normally, do you think you'll pick him up now? Let me know down below. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please be sure to give it a like because it tells me what types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time for another video.